Hello everyone. I decided to do a bit of a video on a Valkyrie Warzone. Um, it was uh, very cheap in the days of play sale, so I thought I'd pick it up. Um, I did have the VR version, which was just e Valkyrie, before I sold my PlayStation VR. Thought I'd give it a go because this one says you don't need VR for it, so. Um, be interesting to see how different it plays. I did actually like E Valkyrie on the PlayStation VR headset, so um, yeah, I thought I'd give it a go, and uh, it's quite good. It, it definitely is quite good. So, for anyone who's not played E Valkyrie before, um, it's completely different to Eve Online, although. It's the same universe, It's I don't believe it's linked at all. There was a first person shooter that was linked to EVE, um, but as far as I'm aware this one isn't. This is a completely standalone game, no tie to the uh, online version of EVE at all. As you can see it's very much a space shooter. Um, 360 degree, full axis and gets as confusing as hell because it's literally every, every direction you can turn you can literally fly in that direction. It's um, dog fights are completely different to well I suppose Battlefield's the only other one that uh, is well known so um, yeah, there's the the dog fights in this are completely different because you can turn your your ship on its end in effect. So you you tend you seem sorry you seem to have all of the ships unlocked at the beginning. That might be because I had original E Valkyrie. I'm not sure. Um, although I don't need the disc or anything because I did sell that as well. I downloaded E Valkyrie Warzone. But I have got all of the ships unlocked to begin with. I'm hoping that's the same for everybody. Um, because, to be honest, it, it, it's quite a necessity. The first ship that I used, I couldn't get on with at all. It was just too weak. Not from a damage perspective, just from a, a an impact. So it's health, I suppose. Shield and health. I mean, the, the one that I'm using in this particular clip in the background is... Um, it, it's an advanced ship, although it says it's easy to use. It's high damage, high reliability and strength, however its fire rate and range are very poor. So you do have to get right in there and unfortunately it's, uh, well to be perfectly fair because this is the first game I've played without the VR, I, I was struggling because um, obviously in VR I could look in any direction that I wanted so my head was always on a pivot I, I was looking in every single direction to see if I could see the enemy coming now just in case you're wondering whether there's something wrong with my uh, my voice um, yes there is first off I have a blocked nose secondly it's two o'clock in the morning and I couldn't sleep which is why I decided to come and make this video of some footage that I'd taken previously. I'm trying a new headset as well so I'm hoping the actual audio is much better than uh, it has been on previous videos. This strangely enough um, I've taken from no longer using my expensive headset which is what I normally use and I've plugged in the free headset that comes with a PlayStation so if it's any better that's slightly concerning. Um, but also good at the same time because it means I'm clearer when I'm talking. Now I was going to refrain from talking for the whole video however to be perfectly honest there is no story in the background of this this is a multiplayer match so um, if I don't talk there's not really going to be much that's uh, going on in the actual video so um, I'll explain a bit about what's going on. So, in this particular one called Carrier Assault, it's the only thing I can liken it to is Team Fortress, if uh, any of you guys have ever played that before. So you have, in effect, a base at either side of the map, and you're um, 
fighting over the center zone. Now you have three relay stations, they're called, that you um, deploy a drone to, and the drone hacks the relay station. As soon as you own all three, it lowers the shields of the enemy's base, or yeah, space carrier, I suppose. Um, in this particular time period, we have lowered the opposition shields, so that's why you can see it says attack and a big flame that I'm shooting there. Now, me shooting that is completely pointless because A, I'm not close enough for my weapons, um, and B, you need to shoot cooling nodes first, which show up as blue nodes on the actual ship. So, as you get closer, there's some on this tower here. There you go, it says 93% at the bottom right and 100% at the top right. They're the parts that I should be shooting. However, as you can see, I'm taking a lot of damage. And this was the problem I was having with this particular mode and this particular ship. I thought at the time that my teammates weren't really doing much. What I later worked out was when you go into the actual screen after dying where it says continue, if you press X, it comes with a list of names down each side. The only human players are the ones that have a number next to their name. So currently I think it's me and one other human player. The rest are bots. And that's because I'm playing on cooperative versus AI. Because with this type of game, I never, ever, ever go straight into multiplayer PvP. Because... I mean, you can see I'm not that good. And in all reality, that is against AI. So, yeah. If I was up against other players, I, I wouldn't last a second. It should be known that I also, at this stage, had forgotten how to use countermeasures. So I had no idea how to get enemy missiles off me. Now the enemy missiles, you have got your normal guns and then on the right hand side you've got two items. You've got your secondary fire, which in this case is an alternate of my main weapon. And you've got, <laughs> it's actually uh, an overshield. So that is how I deflect missiles with this particular ship. It changes depending on the actual uh, vehicle because some of them have um, chaffs, some of them have EMPs, some of them have stealth drives so the missiles can't lock onto them. They've all got something which is there to either distract or destroy uh, incoming missiles. So this is me trying different ships and there you go, you can see the names so on the left, I was second, and it's got a five next to my name. So the only other player in that game was one guy who was below me by one on the left-hand side back then. The rest are computer-controlled. So there you go. We, I think the far right icon at the bottom there is an EMP charge for stopping missiles. Yeah, I'm nowhere near close enough. And by the time I actually get there, shields back up. So I put myself in severe trouble because uh, you can see the health bar and you can see the shield bar. And the health bar on this particular ship that I was just using is very, very small. I think it had six segments, whereas my last one had either ten or maybe even more than that. So I gave the ship a few goes. I'd given the, sh the other ship a few more goes. Um, I can't remember what ship you use in the single player, which, I mean, they call it Chronicles rather than Campaign, but it's basically the same sort of thing. You go in, you play a story, 
that story is you trying to remember your past because the premise of this game is you are a dead pilot well you're not but you're a clone of a dead pilot and every time you die they release another clone which is what how they get around the respawn aspect of the game so on PlayStation a few controls L3 to lock onto the enemy triangle does your ultimate which is the purple circle and that changes depending on the ship R2 is your standard attack L2 is your alternate attack and then square is your um, anti-missile ability whether that be shields, EMP um, or cloak you also have X and circle X being your boost, circle being your break. The one thing that did get me at one stage was you have L1 and R1 are your pitch. So they they rotate your vehicle or your ship on its axis. So if I wanted to line up to that ship so it's flat now, I'd press R1 to rotate to the right. left stick is steer and pitch and yaw so that puts the nose of your ship up or down right stick strangely enough didn't seem to do anything now I would probably if I was the developer have linked that to your head so in VR you can obviously just look around wherever you want whereas you can't do that in normal console so it would have been good if they'd have linked your head movement to the right stick maybe they didn't because they didn't want people to get sick but I don't know. And there we go. The uh, the ship itself, the shields were down. I died straight away, and by the time I came back out, the shields were back up and running. So you don't get much time. Now this particular mission took quite a long time, there's 8 minutes left now until the end of the actual mission um, and it's basically lowest health loses so the, the enemy's carrier has got lower health and it, that situation doesn't change in the next 7 minutes so I'm going to skip ahead a bit. So um, there we go, that's the uh, end of that mission. Eight minutes later, exactly the same result that we were getting. Um, as you can see from that, there were, there were basically two human players. There was myself and um, the second place on the Victus. The, uh, I, can't, I can't even tell what that says, something shooter. Um, the rest of them were bots, basically. So that particular match leveled me up. So now level six. You get experience for your individual ships as well. So you get experience as a player. You, your ships also get experience which you use to level up abilities on that ship. Um, so you can customize the look of your ship, paint color. You can customize the decals that are applied to it. And you can also modify it to have different abilities. So for instance your primary shot goes further but does less damage for instance or vice versa goes shorter distance but does more damage you can get both and you can swap between them between each mission um, and there's there's a lot of customization that you can do but uh, the main thing that I wanted to do at this stage was to find out how I was supposed to actually um, use chaff or flare um, I didn't know at the time it's called a ship ability not an ultimate but just a ship ability uh, I read it in one of the splash screens at the bottom so like most shooters these days whether they be space shooters first person shooters third person shooters 
you have some generic game modes. Luckily there is no um, battle royale which I think would be rather interesting in a space shooter um, but I'm very glad they haven't tried to do that. But you do have team deathmatch, you have in effect capture the flag which is that relic um, hunt which they have in this where you have to collect a relic and take it back to a certain area and both teams are going for the same one. Um, you then have a variation on um, some games call it domination, some games call it uh, king of the hill. So you have to capture and hold an area. So the one that we've just done where you have to capture and hold an area for your drones to hack them to then open up their base is a bit of a hybrid between um, capture the flag and assault us, um, sorry, king of the hill and assault I suppose. So this mode is uh, team deathmatch and as usual you have to uh, reduce their supplies. Again you are given a time time scale so this mission is a 10 minute long mission um, and you start with I believe 29 or 30 I can't remember but we're both on 29 currently so I would assume you get 29 reinforcements um, we have already dropped them to 28 so we're already in the lead So that was me putting my overshield on to counteract that missile. I'd worked out how to do it. As you can see, the ability on the right hand side, the one that looks like um, hexagons inside each other, that is now recharging, so it's almost half recharged. Unfortunately, while it's recharging, I have got the ship on my tail and I'm finding it extremely difficult to get rid of it. Nice shot. I think that's the first, first confirmed kill in all of the video to, to date. So um, I don't know whether in the carrier assault it comes up with that kill in the centre of the screen and the score, because if it does then I didn't kill a thing. So. Uh, Oh, there's another one you see. So, I think that's about it really. I, I could uh, make a video of 30, 40 minutes long like I normally do, but uh, to be perfectly honest, the the variation in this game is not really there. Um, I suppose you could say the same for all shooters. I mean, in all shooters you're pressing R2 to shoot a gun, uh, maybe pressing L2 to throw a grenade or zoom in, or depending on what the game is, but you you know what you get. You have a character or a ship, you go into an arena um, or a battlefield and you try and shoot the enemy. So that's it really, I'm going to leave it there. Um, if there are any more videos that you guys want to see, any more games that you want to see, if you leave a comment in the section below, I'll uh, first of all see whether I've got the game, if not I'll see whether I can get hold of it. Um, and whether it's be a let's play, um, a multiplayer with uh, some friends, or just a review of the game. Um, I'm open to doing anything really, so let me know what you want to see. If you liked the video so far, then uh, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and share with your friends, because um, it's rather, rather lonely at the moment. So. Uh, I'll uh, see you soon guys and hope you've enjoyed the video, bye.